Here at Battleborn Batteries, one of our missions is to educate people about the value of lithium batteries and how they can add value to your experience in a boat, an RV, or an off-grid solar system. One of the reasons that is is that we store two to three times the amount of power in the same amount of space. We've done a lot of educational videos and FAQs and blogs about performance differences between a lead acid battery like I have here on the table and a lithium iron phosphate battery that we make here at Battleborn Batteries. One of the most commonly asked questions we get is about cold temperature charging. So today we're going to highlight a white paper study that we've done on the performance difference between a lead acid battery and a lithium iron phosphate battery at four different temperature ranges starting at room temperature all the way down to 13 to 18 degrees. We spent a lot of time talking about the benefits of our lithium iron phosphate batteries over lead acid batteries. For example, the internal resistance of our lithium iron phosphate batteries is much lower than that of lead acid batteries. This can manifest in a lot of different ways, but most prominently in the so-called pucret effect. What this means for lead acid batteries is that if you try to draw high power out of a lead acid battery, the internal resistance causes a voltage sag that means that the battery will cut off sooner than you think. So, if you try to draw a large power load from a lead acid battery, you will actually get less energy out of that battery. That is what's known as the Pucret effect. The Pucret effect is described mathematically by Pucret's law, which basically states that if you have a high current coming out of the battery, you get less energy coming out of the battery. For example, the energy that you get out of a 20 hour discharge rate out of a lead acid battery is significantly greater than the energy you would get out of a 5 hour discharge rate from a lead acid battery. This is not the case with a lithium iron phosphate battery. Even though Pucret's law is widely used, it has some disadvantages practically. For example, Pucret's law does not take into account the temperature of the battery or the age of the battery. What actually happens is that this effect is amplified at colder temperatures. It's also amplified for older batteries. In this study, we decided to look specifically at the temperature of the battery. So we used a brand new set of Group 31 AGM batteries. And we focused on the temperature of the battery. We wanted to show here what happens to Pucret's law or the Pucret effect when you actually take these batteries and cool them. The results of our study show that all batteries experience some diminished capacity at colder temperatures. But the most significant result is that lead acid batteries are dramatically diminished in capacity at colder temperatures when compared to lithium iron phosphate batteries, which are only slightly diminished. So let's talk about the test setup that we used to publish this white paper. First of all, we wanted to be fair, we wanted to make it as real world as possible. So the test involves three different steps. First of all, we charge up a battery at room temperature. Then we take it to the temperature that we want to discharge it in. To be fair, the reason why we did this was we figured if you're at your house on the weekend and you drive to the mountains to go camping and then you're in the mountains going camping and it gets cold at night, you're discharging your battery in a different temperature. We also wanted to make sure the batteries were completely full. Now, we did do four different temperature ranges. See, the four ranges we had are 67 to 72, which is room temperature in our building, 33 to 37, 26 to 30, and 13 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Now there's also four different load ranges, 10 amps, 30 amps, 50 amps, and 80 amps. Now the study was performed with two Group 31 AGM batteries, which are a total of 210 amp hours, and two of our Battleborn 112s, which are 100 amp hours each. Now the testing was done in a freezer with controlled temperature sensors and also a lot of monitoring equipment, which is all published in the white paper if you want to see how we did this study. When performing this study, we wanted to make sure our results were very accurate. So we used sophisticated data logging and data acquisition equipment to make sure that the results we got on the performance of these two battery groups were very precisely measured. We also used a 12.2 voltage cutoff, which is the industry recommended 50% depth of discharge for a lead acid battery, 
most lead acid battery manufacturers will tell you that if you go below that point, you're going to exponentially reduce the amount of cycles you get out of the battery. Our battery was cut off at 11.8. This number is more arbitrary just based on the other components in the system. Both batteries were recharged by a Victron Energy MultiPlus inverter charger. We used their industry specific AGM charging curve on this battery test. It's built into the MultiPlus, so we did not modify that in any way. We used our own charging parameters that we recommend for the Battleborn battery. Both groups of batteries were put into the freezer at the same exact time to make sure each test result was taken under the same exact conditions. Let's go over the results that we found. We're going to cover the 30 amp and the 80 amp discharge results. The two lead acid batteries when discharged at room temperature on a 30 amp draw, which is about 360 watts, not really a big load considering what people are running in boats and RVs these days. These two batteries, the AGM lead acids, were able to deliver 63.27 amp hours out of their 210 advertised available amp hours. Not even one third of their own power can they deliver even at room temperature. The Battleborn batteries, the two lithium iron phosphate 100 amp hour 12 volt batteries, under the same conditions, room temperature, discharging at 30 amps, were able to deliver 206.98 amp hours. Now that's a big difference between only being able to use one third of your power and actually over 100% of your available power. The 80 amp discharge results are much more interesting and very, very shocking actually. So we got a 210 amp hour AGM lead acid battery bank. We discharged it at 80 amps room temperature between 67 and 72 degrees. And we were only able to pull out 11.25 amp hours. That's right, I just said that 11.25 amp hours out of 210 usable. That's like around 5% of the battery capacity you can actually use. The two Battleborn Lithiums delivered 190.81 amp hours. That's a big difference considering that, yeah, you could add four or six lead acid batteries to this test to make it a little more fair for the lead acid because of the resistance inside, but do you really have room in your RV to add another 600 or 800 pounds of battery on board? Just doesn't make sense. The lead acid battery does not perform even at room temperature. All right, now it's time to chill out. We're gonna talk about the 33 to 37 degree range. Both groups of batteries were charged at room temperature and then placed in the freezer. And on the 30 amp draw, our group of lead acid batteries were able to deliver 42.02 amp hours. The lithium battery bank, our Battleborn lithium batteries, were able to deliver 199.28 amp hours. Almost 100% versus the competition losing yet another third of their energy. They went from 63 to 42 without even being below freezing. In this temperature range, right above freezing, 33 to 37 degrees, on the 80 amp draw, our lead acid battery bank again delivered 11.23 amp hours. And the Battleborn lithium bank delivered 190.77 amp hours of power. The next range of temperatures that we're gonna discuss is actually the most controversial range when it comes to talking about cold temperature and lithium batteries. It's 26 to 30 degrees, and the reason why this is most heavily discussed is that at 25 degrees, a Battleborn battery will no longer take a charge, and it won't allow you to recharge the battery until it comes above 32. So most of our customers are asking questions about this temperature range. We did the test exactly the same as all the other tests. Let's talk about the 30 amp results. The lead acid battery group at a 30 amp hour draw was able to deliver 41.23 amp hours, while our Battleborn Lithium delivered 178.18 amp hours. Let's talk about the 80 amp hour test at 26 to 30 degrees. Our lead acid battery group performed very poorly. This group of batteries was only able to deliver 0.38 amp hours at this temperature range. That's less than one amp hour. The battery is effectively useless. Our Battleborn batteries delivered 175 amp hours at this temperature range.
The final step of our white paper study was to test another temperature band, the fourth and final one, 13 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Now this is really far down into cold temps, people. Most RVs and boats are gonna be having a lot of other problems at this temperature range, unless they're specifically built to operate in this kind of a climate. The lead acid battery group on a 30 amp draw was able to deliver 31.94 amp hours. Meanwhile, our Battleborn lithium batteries delivered 166.21 amp hours. Now let's talk about the 80 amp results. Our lead acid bank was yet still unable to produce at least one amp hour of power. It only gave out 0.65 amp hours. Granted, it is a little higher than the 26 to 30 range, however, still useless, effectively delivering no power at this cold temperature. Our Battleborn lithium batteries on an 80 amp draw, 13 to 18 degrees, were able to deliver 154.45 amp hours. So let's summarize the data on the screen. You can see the pucrit effect is readily apparent, especially for lead acid batteries. As you increase the discharge rate, you decrease the capacity. For example, at room temperature, the capacity decreases from 63 amp hours to 11 amp hours. But more importantly, look what happens at the coldest temperatures. At 13 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, the capacity diminishes from 31.94 amp hours to virtually zero. You cannot extract any power out of a 210 amp hour AGM system below freezing. So the increased resistance at colder temperatures is extreme for lead acid batteries. You can see that here in the discharge, but it also counts for the charge. You cannot put a charge in a lead acid battery when it's that cold because of the enhanced resistance. Now you can see in the data here that we haven't even tried to charge the Battleborn system less than 26 degrees. That's because of our internal cutoff that we intentionally put in there to preserve the cells. However, you really can't do that for a lead acid battery anyway. So the point of this study is to demonstrate that even though lithium iron phosphate batteries tend to have a low temperature cutoff, you cannot extract or put in current to a similarly sized lead acid or AGM system at cold temperatures. Having said that, we at Battleborn Batteries are aware that many of our customers want to be able to charge and discharge their batteries readily at very cold temperatures. So we've actually come up with multiple solutions. For example, we have our own external heating solution. You can buy our external heating wrap and safely heat your battery above freezing, allowing it to charge and discharge at the appropriate capacities. Do not use a lead acid heating blanket or a heating pad. That could do damage to the battery. For our next generation of batteries, we also have an option for internal heating. We've developed a solution whereby the heat is generated internally keeping the battery just above freezing. The power for this heat comes either from your charger or from the battery itself, ensuring that you can always keep the battery within the appropriate temperature levels for operation. I'm really pleased to highlight the fact that the data shows that the performance of the Battleborn batteries at high power and low temperatures was exceptional. For example, we dropped less than 5% between 30 amps and 80 amps at freezing in total discharge capacity. I hope that this drives the point home that the myth that AGM batteries perform better than Battleborn batteries at cold temperatures is completely wrong. The data shows that our batteries perform exceptionally at high power and at cold temperatures when compared to AGM batteries. There's no comparison. Just because we have a cold temperature cutoff it doesn't mean that you can't use the batteries at cold temperatures. You can still extract way more energy out of a Battleborn battery below freezing than you can out of an AGM battery. Now that we've summarized some of the results from our white paper study on cold temperature charging and discussed some of the power factors that come into play when you get below freezing when operating either one of these battery groups, I think we can all look back and realize that it is true we can deliver over three times more power than a lead acid battery even at room temperature. When we get to colder temps, the power delivery difference is much more significant. As a matter of fact, 
In order to deliver the same amount of power as one of our Battleborn batteries at 15 degrees, you'd need 560 amp hours of these lead acid batteries. That's six of these batteries you would need to deliver the same amount of power as one of these 31 pound lithium iron phosphate Battleborn batteries. That means to match the equivalent of power that we delivered at 15 degrees for two of our batteries, you're gonna need over 1,000 amp hours of lead acid, which is about 750 pounds of power to deliver the same amount of power as 62 pounds of Battleborn battery. I think we can all see now that Battleborn lithium batteries perform much better than lead acid at any temperature range, and that actually the cold temperature charging or discharging for a lithium battery is not even a big deal, considering that a lead acid battery can barely deliver any power at all below freezing. And that's why we always say, lead is dead. <laughs>